Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank Bartomeu Marie and um, as well as the entire uh, department of uh, research and publication, uh, especially uh, Sunny Young, uh, for conceiving and hosting uh, this uh, symposium and having me. I will uh, start with a few words um, of introduction about the Pompidou Center. It was created in uh, 1977 in a daring building designed by the architects Renzo Piano and Richard Rogers. Um, as you can see, um, a very uh, experimental uh, architectural uh, idea, which was meant to integrate new media uh, from the start. Uh, the Centre Pompidou has been hosting to this date four main entities, uh, besides the National Museum of Modern Art. Uh, this I uh, hybrid institution is also the house of the Institute for Acoustic and Musical Research, created by Pierre Boulez, the largest free access public library in France, and a department of cultural development, which produces every year a season of performing arts, screenings, and academic programs. From its onsets, uh, the DNA of the institution has adopted the form of a plural administrative structure where the missions of conservation, research, transmission, and creation are developed, each with its own temporality and core audience. Within, um, the, uh, within this context, the National Museum of Modern Art is a neuralgic uh, source of activity. Its collection preserves over 110,000 works of art from the very beginning of the 20th century to today, spanning all technical fields, painting, sculpture, drawing, architecture, design, photography, cinema, video, new media, mixed media installation, as well as artist printed editions and archives. Thematic and monographic exhibitions, ranging from modern to contemporary art, take place both in the Paris building, which I'm showing here. This is the rear facade, the most daring one of a building that is reversed out, inside out, basically. The inside. Um, and also, uh, uh, the exhibition take place in off-site venues, uh, in particular in Metz, Malaga, Brussels, and soon Shanghai, where temporary Centre Pompidou's are settling in. This offered the opportunity to circulate the collection out of the historical building, which has become too narrow, and as you can see from this picture, there is no room around the building to expand in this urban surrounding. The circulation of the collection also makes it possible to engage and experiment with alternative perspective <clears throat> on the history of art. Questions of co cosmopolitanism, uh, transnationalism and globalization that are at the core of modern and postmodern art histories can therefore be addressed through various displacements of the collection and its encounter with other contexts and audiences. Um, I will address a series of um, issues. Of course, the Centre Pompidou is a huge uh, institution with a, a long history. Um, I will just outline a few points of its daring um, uh, experiments in exhibition uh, forms uh, and, and uh, new issues at stake today. So new technologies and the postmodern turn. Um, as regards new media, um, I would like to start with recalling a few historical landmarks from the history of the Centre Pompidou. It must be said that the museum was among the first uh, to engage seriously in the collection of new media arts acquiring since uh, 1975, uh, before the opening of the Piano and Rogers building, videotapes and films, um, as well as important early closed circuit installations. Uh, I'm showing just a few of them here. Uh, Peter Campus Interface from 72, Dan Graham Presence Continuous Past from um, uh, uh, 1974. Um, and the curator who developed the collection um, until 2014, Christine Van Asch, established a series of commissions. And this was the only department that was actually had a politics of commissions to artists. 
which has lasted until the turn of the millennium. And uh, of course, the lack of uh, public funding was uh, uh, unfortunately put an end to this uh, to this politics. Um, it led, this politics of commissions led to uh, major um, pieces of video art, such as um, Namjoon Pike's uh, Arc Double Face from 85, uh, 100 only uh, monitor installation, uh, which needs restoration, um, just as uh, the more the better. And uh, to the production of seminal works of uh, new media history, such as Chris Marker's Zapping Zone, uh, an early computer installation uh, produced in uh, uh, nine, nine, oh, sorry, 1990 for Raymond Bellour, Catherine David and Christine Van Asch's exhibition Passage de l'image and featuring, as you can see, early personal computers which were the able to GS among uh, television uh, sets. And this until the exhibition Sonic Process, New Geographies of Sound, which in 2002 features, featured ambitious audiovisual works experimenting with sounds, including, uh, for instance, Esprit de Paris, Spirits of Paris, commissioned to Mike Kelly and British sound artist Scanner. Such an, interest, such an interest for in electronic and computer technologies was further affirmed in 1985 by the exhibition Les Immatériaux, the immaterial or unmaterial, a milestone experiment in the field of museology, media and communication. This project was conceived by the philosopher Jean-François Lyotard, who took part in the theoretical debate on postmodernism in 1979 with his famous book, The Postmodern Condition, A Report on Knowledge, and the design theorist Thierry Chaput, who was then in charge of the Centre de Création Industrielle, the Centre for Industrial Design, a platform of investigation and collection for industrial design associated to the museum. The show, um, you can see, um, exhibition plan here. It uh, looks like a maze, which it was indeed. Um, the show um, uh, disturbed the architecture, as you can see here, and proposed a meditation on the technological divide, how the dematerialization produced by the Society of Information has affected the heritage of modernity as a humanist emancipatory project. With its lucid philosophical statements and its innovative scenography, I'm just going to uh, scroll a few slides without being, having time to comment on them, but they're informative. Uh, so with this uh, lucid philosophical statement and its innovative scenography, the exhibition settled a high standard of programming where the institution's role is not only to mediate existing artworks, but also to open up a space to experimental and critical thinking on, on the state of society. The project brought together artworks from various periods of history, from ancient Egypt, as you can see here, to contemporary artists, and a wide range of objects then uh, considered as testimonies of the current evolution of the Western world. Industrial robot prototypes, um, satellite photographs, medical imagery, holograms, uh, samples of various smells, and miniature theatres. This is very, very postmodern uh, gestures. Um, here we see them. Um, interactive media installations, also working outfits from various professions that were considered um, important uh, in the 80s, experimental devices, and above all, personal computers with which the visitor could interact. The most interesting aspect of the exhibition display uh, was its opacity. Within a labyrinth of mesh walls, the visitors were given wireless headsets to navigate by the ear between sections and zones of the exhibition, witnessing in an anonymous design a radical juxtaposition of unrelated objects and materials. So rather than a single narrative, Les Immateriaux offered as many narratives as it counted visit visitors. 
The idea of magnetic cards, which would have allowed each visitor to print down his or her own itinerary at the end of the show, could not be realized. It expresses, however, the project of a self-archiving of the exhibition by its own audience. Landmark artworks from the avant-garde, so I'm showing here other views. This uh, impression of suspension of the walls, or but uh, was used as wall, as mesh uh, curtains. Um, landmark works of, uh, from the avant-garde and from ut utopic forms of art, such as Kazimir Malevich architectons, uh, Laszlo Molinaj um, space light modulator, or Raoul Hausmann's um, mechanical head, or the spirit of our time, appeared modestly inserted among the labyrinth, suggesting a retrospective decentering of modernity. In the shape of a maze, the opaque spatial structure presented the public with a tense and disturbing, anticipating vision of the archaeology of the 20th century. So one is tempted to ask uh, what type of museum critique could come after this. And um, in recent years, one observes a double movement in the evolution of the Musée National d'Art Moderne. On the one hand, there is an attempt to complexify the historical presentation of the collection within the Pompidou walls, and on the other, the opening of new venues abroad, rather than architectural extensions of the original building, has been conceived not in terms of franchise, but in terms of Centre Pompidou Provisoire, uh, temporary Pompidou centers. I will expose these two aspects of the museum politics, which interlace acquisition, hanging, and mediation, um, and will end with uh, uh, the example of a new type of commission realized this past year. So main narrative and sideways. Um, Today, uh, the floor devoted to the first part of the museum collection from uh, 1905 to 1965 includes a series of rooms um, which comes as uh, nuances to the main narrative. So I'm showing just here to start with uh, the, the main rooms. And um, a few examples of what we call salle dossier, which are forms of study rooms within the, um, the display. They are marked with gray walls, and they are uh, conceived as a parenthesis all along the path, and intertwine documentation and artworks around critical interpretations of the collection. Um, among them, politics of art, last year uh, displayed various political debates, more or less known, around the history of the artworks and the political engagement of major art critics and theory theoreticians. Uh, here there was a room devoted to André Breton, for instance. I'm just scrolling a few of, them, of these. Here is uh, Alexandre Rochenko uh, Workers' Club, uh, Rochenko designed for the uh, international um, uh, exhibition of decorative art in 2025, a very uh, beautiful piece of, um, of uh, utopian uh, avant-garde um, that was remade. The French uh, um, development of social realism uh, between the wars, uh, another example is uh, the listening eye, which was uh, which presented the conversation between visual arts, music, sound, and poetry throughout the century. And the last one, which I think is very uh, relevant in the context of this symposium, was called Histoire, so with a singular plural, uh, of a collection. And it's currently on view. It's uh, a form of iconoclastic account of the making of the Musée National d'Art Moderne, 
um, I just make a parenthesis here. Uh, this collection uh, has a long history. In France, the first public museum was uh, created after the, Revol the French Revolution in uh, 1793 as the museum, the National Museum of the Arts. Uh, hosted in the Louvre, previously the royal collection becoming, becoming a democratic um, a holding uh, from the state to the citizens. And it's only in the uh, years um, uh, 1930s that the uh, living artists uh, didn't expose in the Louvre any longer, but were uh, uh, presented in uh, various other museums before we divided between Louvre, Musée d'Orsay, and um, the Museum of Modern Art. So, um, histories of collections um, actually showed um, the timeline of tastes and also of political compromises that the museum went through. So, when in this room, for instance, uh, we see uh, paintings that are most often in uh, storage that are not shown among, you know, the selection of uh, the museum. And here's an uh, interesting example. It's the a donation of the fascist Italian state to uh, the French government uh, in the 20s and which was accepted and um, is now, again, these are works that are never, almost never on view. So, um, in other uh, words, um, this display is attempting a form of uh, self-critique in the history of the museum acquisitions and also, of course, reminds us that we should always be critical of what we acquire today. Other... Um, so this is the other images of this series. The other uh, place to experiment is we, we're going now to the other floor, the floor that covers from 65 through the 21st century, the so-called contemporary um, floor. Um, Uh, the other uh, room where to, to experiment with um, the uh, alternative path to the history um, on display is called Sal Focus. It's a room devoted to um, uh, focalized uh, um, uh, history. Um, it hosts recent acquisitions, restoration or donation or collaboration with other institutions. It's interesting to uh, note that important ensembles of uh, modern transnational art forms have been presented uh, in this room, such as uh, Lee Ung No's uh, donation, a uh, recent donation of uh, 14 paintings and drawings and three sculptures. This was created by the director of the museum, Bernard Blisten. Or the exhibition Latif Muedin, uh, uh, which uh, Lisa Orikawa was mentioning yesterday, uh, in um, in collaboration uh, with the National Gallery of Singapore. So this uh, space underlines what is the politics of the museum with regard to globalization. In fact, the Musée National d'Art Moderne does not proceed through a systematic research by geographic regions with the aim of reaching, um, with, with the aim, sorry, of representing each zone of each continent. It relies rather on the singular research fields developed by its curator um, and Catherine David, who is the head of the globalization department, plays a big role here, according to their specialty, specialties and ongoing research. For the modern period, uh, the research starts with the history of the cultural in and intellectual contacts and conversation between France and foreign countries throughout the 20th century. So I'm going to skip, sorry, um, for the translation, the little paragraph here. Um, one other room devoted to such, you know, alternative uh, views is the Galerie Zero, the Gallery Zero, um, which hosts also 
uh, experiments in curating beyond the format of classical exhibitions of contemporary art. A recent example is Memories of the Future, Mo Modern um, uh, Indian Modernities, curated by Catherine David, a research-based project rather than exhibition, um, which is the preliminary uh, stage uh, before uh, acquisitions, such as uh, Benita's Percival's The Triumphal Entry, you see on the right, which has been uh, acquired. Um, the displacing the collection, uh, temporary Centre Pompidou, uh, I'm giving here the example of the uh, Pompidou uh, collaboration with um, a foundation in Brussels, uh, which belongs to the city of Brussels, um, hosted in um, a former garage from the 1930s. Uh, so the museum here is taking the risk to venture into non-museographic spaces. Uh, and it takes a huge team to, um, to, occup to work uh, uh, and occupy the 30,000 square meters of this remarkable piece of an industrial heritage. So here I'm going through a few slides. Uh, so here we have a displacement that is at once geographic, cultural and contextual um, to, uh, to try gestures of reinvention of the collection. Firstly, to address other paradigms of production that are now about to disappear, such as industrial production and the historical culture of the working class, which was addressed in part of the spaces such as here where we had like uh, mm, inquiries from the 60s and 70s into the uh, workers um, uh, life uh, in the in the factories and uh, secondly uh, to work in a critical way uh, with unusual settings um, and thirdly, to reinforce the exploration of the local artistic situation, both for the Pompidou collection and for the construction of a new institution, um, part of the project consisting in accompanying the city of Brussels in the process of commissions with, of course, an international uh, and especially Belgian board of curators uh, to young artists based in the city. Here we see uh, in what used to be the offices of the garage, uh, a choice of artworks that themselves can uh, echo the, the, this topic. And as I was mentioning, the uh, next um, collaboration, which will happen only for five years, will be in uh, Westbund in Shanghai. Uh, and will develop out of uh, the Chinese collection, which is uh, already important at Saint Pompidou because many of uh, Chinese artists, as you may know, have been trained in France before going back to China to create uh, national uh, academies of art, such as CAFA and the Hangzhou uh, School. And I just want to end with um, evoking the the format of exhibitions um, which become a form of uh, platforms um, for uh, debate and in relationship to uh, social topics. Um, in the fall of 2017, uh, the Centre Pompidou accepted the proposal of French artist Eric Baudelaire um, to do a project entitled Après, After. After stands for After the Attacks of November uh, 2016 in Paris, which revealed a deep crack in the French society, the arbitrary slaughtering of over 100 people attending a rock concert in Paris, uh, revealed to what extent the French colonial past is still a repressed issue and a source of disrupting violence. It revealed the deep crisis of young French citizens from immigrant descent, confined in the suburbs, who can't find any place in society, uh, in the society they grew up. The project, which lasted uh, 12 days, 
uh, gathered a new film by Eric Baudelaire entitled Also Known as Jihadi, an indirect portrait of a young man suspected of and sentenced for terrorism. Selections from the historical collection um, of the, of the uh, Museum of Modern Art, of the Centre Pompidou, that um, ranged from the high modernism of Brancusi and Le Corbusier to activism and marginal forms of uh, uh, militant uh, filmmaking. We see the guerrilla art action group on the far right. Um, it gathers as well a publication and daily discussions, as well as nightly edited posters reporting on the discussion, and this was referring to the tradition of, in fact, after the French Revolution, when uh, the debates of the assembly were actually published uh, under the form of posters uh, posted in the public space, and hung on, uh, as you can see, on the surroundings of the Pompidou, also hosting some graffitis. Uh, so the entire uh, project was conceived as an unachieved Deleuzean alphabet, which articulated um, the topics of the talks as well as the chapters of the display, from A for architecture through C for commemoration, E for education, until etc., until T for running out of time. The main idea was to try and surpass the confused, dramatic and distorted language of the media coverage of the events in order to, if not to give answers, um, at least make room for a distanciated and critical formulation of the questions. The laconic formal structure of Eric Baudelaire's film is also um, interesting in this regard. Uh, the protagonist, the young man suspected from, of terrorism, um, is never to be seen in the film. He is only approached through the places he has been, so it's a portrait through the landscapes he, have been, he has um, inhabited, um, and through a montage of texts from his uh, legal uh, file. This um, film, in a way, this portrait it is entirely built around the central missing image. On another level, the format of the project, I would call it a project rather than an exhibition, aimed at expressing a state of urgency, calling the museum and more broadly the cultural institution to mobilize itself to think both the vulnerability and the potentiality of artworks in times of social unrest. Through uh, such projects, in other terms, uh, by inviting artists and philosophers, if one thinks also of Jean-François Lyotard and Les Immatériaux, not only to exhibit, but to displace the perception of a historical collection and the role of an institution, the museum uh, can open up uh, opportunities to renew, to renew itself and envisage its collections beyond the repetition of one same system of values. And um, I will be happy to take questions afterwards. Thank you. <laughs>